What's going on guys, this is Sam. 2018 already starting out with a bang. We have our first information about iOS 11.2.2 and what we can expect to see inside of that very small update that will be coming in a few days according to Apple. Unfortunately, this update is not jam packed with new features. There are no new wallpapers to take a look at. This is not going to be a fun update. This is an important update though nonetheless that addresses a very large security issue known as Spectre. Now Spectre goes hand in hand with another security exploit. They were published at the exact same time. You can go to Meltdown Attack or SpectreAttack.com to learn more. Very complex issues. They affect pretty much every device made in the past few years. They have to do with a hardware flaw in Intel, AMD, and ARM processors. Now Meltdown only affects Intel at the time but Spectre affects Intel, AMD, and ARM processors. So if you have a device with any one of those processors for Meltdown, uh, just Intel and then Spectre, Intel, AMD, or ARM, you are affected by the issues that are about to be addressed in iOS 11.2.2 and Mac updates for Safari as well that are coming. The individuals who discovered this update made an entire site to help people understand what it means, what the implications are, what you need to do to be protected. It's meltdownattack.com. I'll leave those links down below and on this site is so much information about these two vulnerabilities and these exploits there are very very long white paper articles about how it works and the processes by which these can take place they're extremely long they're extremely complex I'm sure there's some people that have really dug deep inside of these but I want to read the top of the web page because this is what they wanted people to see first this is how they wanted people to understand these vulnerabilities. So it goes like this, Meltdown and Spectre exploit critical vulnerabilities in modern processors. They are hardware bugs, so that's very important to note here. These are not software issues, these are issues with the processor hardware themselves. So that's really important to understand. It continues saying, these hardware bugs allow programs to steal data which are currently processed on the computer. While programs are typically not permitted to read data from other programs, a malicious program can exploit Meltdown and Spectre to get hold of secrets stored in the memory of other running programs. This is where it's important. This might include your password stored in a password manager or browser, your personal photos, emails, instant messages, and even business critical documents. The next paragraph sounds like a list of features for a brand new product. Meltdown and Spectre work on personal computers, mobile devices, and in the cloud. Depending on the cloud provider's infrastructure, it might be possible to steal data from other customers. The reason Meltdown and Spectre are such huge deals is that they are hardware issues. And that means the companies have to do something fun called a mitigation to correct the issue. Because it is a hardware issue, it has to be mitigated. You can't actually fix a hardware issue without replacing the hardware. That's not feasible. So companies like Apple and Google and Microsoft and presumably hundreds or thousands of others have to do something called a mitigation, which is just a fancy word for a workaround. They have to work around the issue rather than actually fixing it. But now I wanna jump over to this really good Gizmodo article that I read. It does a great job at talking about what Meltdown and Spectre take advantage of to exist in the first place. And that is something called speculative execution. It's a very interesting concept. It's something that I didn't even know existed and I wanna read it directly from the article. Now, of course, this is linked down below. They say in 2017, Google's Project Zero team in collaboration with researchers at a number of different universities identified an absolutely massive problem with speculative execution, one of the techniques employed in modern microprocessors as a way of improving performance. Essentially, when a processor uses speculative execution instead of performing tasks strictly sequentially, it predicts what calculations it might need to do subsequently. It then solves them in advance and in parallel fashion. The result is that the CPU wastes some cycles performing unnecessary calculations, but performs chains of commands much faster than if it wanted to process them one after the other. However, there's a serious flaw in the way modern processors are hard-coded to use speculative execution. They don't check permissions correctly and leak information about speculative commands that don't end up being run. Whoops. As a result, user programs can possibly steal glimpses at protected parts of the kernel memory, that's memory dedicated to the most essential core components of an operating system and their interactions with system hardware, and it's supposed to be isolated from user processes at all times to prevent such glimpses from happening. Everything from passwords to stored files could be compromised as a result. So in summary, if a bad application that takes advantage of Meltdown or Spectre gets installed on your mobile phone, your computer, you're susceptible to this and it can view your photos or your passwords and your files, and obviously you don't want that to happen. And like I mentioned earlier, because this is a hardware flaw, the only thing you can do to fix it is to mitigate it, meaning that it's a workaround. It's not a solid fix, it's a workaround for the issue that is still there. You're just sort of putting a Band-Aid on a wound 
that you know is never gonna heal. Anyway, today Apple published an article about the issue. They posted this on their site today about speculative execution vulnerabilities in ARM-based and Intel CPUs. There's a few highlights here that I wanna talk about. First of all, quote, all Mac systems and iOS devices are affected, but there are no known exploits impacting customers at this time. Apple also makes another important note here. Since exploiting many of these issues requires a malicious app to be loaded on your Mac or iOS device, we recommend downloading software only from trusted sources such as the App Store. So don't click on sketchy ads online, don't go browsing in places on the internet that you probably should not be browsing, don't download shady software, stick to official sources where official software is distributed, and you will likely never have to worry about this issue. Apple continues saying that they have already released mitigations in iOS 11.2, macOS 10.13.2, and tvOS 11.2 to help defend against Meltdown, and they mentioned that the Apple Watch is not affected by Meltdown. Now, Spectre is a slightly different story Story. If you're worried about being affected by Meltdown, as long as you had the latest versions of iOS, macOS, or tvOS, you are completely safe from the issue. I probably shouldn't say completely since it's a mitigation. You are likely safe from the issue. For Spectre, Apple says this in the coming days, we plan to release mitigations in Safari to help defend against Spectre. We continue to develop and test further mitigations for these issues and will release them in upcoming updates of iOS, macOS, tvOS, and watch us. Under the background section, they just talk a little bit about how the issues work. And then there are a few other things that they make note of. And, and one of the biggest things about the mitigations for Meltdown and Spectre is performance. The way that modern processors were processing things was in a way to make sure that performance was extremely high. And security kind of got pushed by the wayside for that, although it was unintentional. So when you mitigate these issues, you are technically slowing down performance on macOS or iOS devices. Now that opens up an entirely different issue right there, but Apple has this to say about a reduction in performance. Apple says that our testing with public benchmarks has shown that the changes in the December 2017 updates, that was iOS 11.2, macOS 10.13.2, and tvOS 11.2, resulted in no measurable reduction in the performance of macOS and iOS as measured by the Geekbench for benchmark or in common web browsing benchmarks such as Speedometer, Jetstream, and ARES6. So that's good to hear. It looks like Apple was able to mitigate the issue and fix it by a mitigation without reducing performance. So that's really good to hear. Once again, with Spectre, there's a slightly different story here. Apple says, quote, Apple will release an update for Safari on macOS and iOS in the coming days to mitigate these exploit techniques. Our current testing indicates that the upcoming Safari mitigations will have no measurable impact on the speedometer and ARES 6 tests and an impact, so there is one, of less than 2.5% on the Jetstream benchmark. And then they continue to say they're going to keep working on things to make sure that they are mitigated, that there are no more issues present. But that's important to note that in Safari, for the Jetstream benchmark, Apple has mitigated the Spectre issue in a way that does affect performance. Now 2.5% or less is a very small number. It's something that I don't think users really need to worry about, but that is still important to note that there is number one, an update coming for macOS and iOS devices. So we do have a new iOS update on the way and that performance for that benchmark specifically will be reduced during certain tasks. I think there are a number of takeaways from what Apple had to say from Meltdown Inspector being vulnerabilities in the first place. First of all, who would have thought that it wasn't even an Apple-only issue this time or a Windows-only issue? There was a universal hardware flaw on Intel and AMD and ARM processors that could allow other people that you don't want to see your information have access to your information if they installed a certain application on your device, on your phone, on your tablet, on your laptop, on your desktop. I mean, it's a super far-reaching issue. And I would say that the second big takeaway here is that while Meltdown and Spectre are really big deals, they are huge, huge security exploits on millions of devices around the world, you're probably not gonna be affected by it. Just make sure you update to the latest versions of everything when they're released. That is a rule of thumb for myself in general. A lot of people are hesitant to upgrade because they worry about additional bugs or performance being reduced because of new features, especially when there's a big update like iOS 11 or iOS 12. Always stay up to date. You're gonna be most protected and most safe if you're up to date. There's also another argument that follows that saying, well, if I update, then I'm gonna be exposed to new issues that were created in the new updates. 
I have never had an issue with security being on the latest versions. Keep an eye out for iOS 11.2.2. Keep an eye out for new versions of Safari on Mac. All of your devices are probably affected. It's a scary thought, but just stay up to date on everything and you should be good to go because the issue, while it is a big deal once again, is probably not gonna affect you because it is very hard to replicate. It's not as easy as you might think. That is gonna be all for this video. If you enjoyed watching, it does help me out if you take one second to drop a like down below. And if you're interested in hearing more about future iOS and macOS updates, make sure you hit subscribe as well. If you wanna help support the channel, you can head over to iUpdateOS.com slash merch, purchase a t-shirt or hoodie, that would be incredible. But for now, I've been Sam. I hope all of you are doing great. Stay cyber safe out there and I will talk to you in my next video.